Hello everyone, my name is Mahati and today I'll be talking to you about space. So in space I'll be talking to you about galaxies such as our own Milky Way and one of our next door neighbours Andromeda. So first, there are different types of galaxies, some really big and some small really small like dwarf galaxies sometimes you can find dwarf galaxies you know in like bigger galaxies like our milky way they're very common sometimes so let's start off i'll tell you the different types of galaxies you can find so you can find an elliptical galaxy which is like a very irregular shape but it's not an irre irregular galaxy but it's like an egg-like shape yeah they're like egg-like shaped galaxies now you have a pretty good idea of elliptical galaxies the next one is spiral galaxies our uh, own milky way is a spiral galaxies and it has four arms which have been like made so that we everything is clumped together so now each of these arms are made of mostly dust and gases and necessary particles the next type is a bed spiral the bed spiral they have not been studied too much but yeah they are pretty weird because there's like you've got this common like the center of the galaxy and then you've got two arms like one like that and maybe one like that or you've got the center and then it's like an s like it's like that the top is like that and the bottom is like the end, bottom of the s the top of the s and the bottom of the s and the last bit is an irregular galaxy which is just no shape at all like gas is shaped no shape at all it does not even it's like gas you know sorry i'm repeating the same things so i'll tell you about elliptical galaxies so an elliptical galaxy is divided from e0 to e7 um, E7 refers to a flat elliptical shape and E0 refers to a nearly round shape. For the spiral galaxies you have SA to SM probably, not SM, sorry, sorry, SC. SA means the centre of the galaxy is huge, like enormous. S B means it's like a medium sized core, a medium sized center. And SC is like a small sized core, which was like pretty easy to guess. And sorry, that's just a bit of music going on. So for the bad spirals, there's not much, but yeah, there's not much. So it's SB A I think and to S B S B C I am really bad at the S B bit. So the I'm not sure what what each of them mean. Like I've read in books so far but I still not got any information on that, sorry. So the next one is irregular gal galaxies. There's not much to say about them. Just weird. No shape at all. They might be like a huge puddle or like an enormous, what, a blob of stuff. Now I'll tell you the categories of the galaxies. It is, it is one, two, five in Roman numerals written. So, one refers to a ginormous galaxy, like a super giant galaxy. And size five refers to a dwarf galaxy, just as I was talking about. Now, our Milky Way galaxy falls in category three, which is normal giant galaxy. Probably our neighbor Andromeda might be falling into category four, which is a mystery for me, but not a mystery for the scientists. Now, 
I just wanted to show you a few photos of different types of galaxies that I've just kept them in front of me. Um, it's just like a small book, okay? So don't worry too much, okay? So here you can see a giant elliptical galaxy, which I know it looks a bit weird. It's glowing in daylight. So over here you can see a spiral galaxy and now here's a spiral, another spiral galaxy with its two views. This is our own side view. It, I know it looks a bit cloudy but it's, the book is trying to imitate gas mainly and our top, top view. This is probably I estimate the Milky Way because it looks like, it means like it has four arms. Here's our bed spiral. And now over here, it's a bit weird. Can you see, this is what I'm talking about. You've got the center over here, which keeps the arms fixed to it. And then you've got these two weird bars. Yeah. And then it says over here, it's a spiral arm. So basically what this is, is you've got the core, but then what you've got is you've got two bars going up and one going down and then one like two bars they've been curved slightly so like from the bottom it looks like that and from the top it looks like that like a rainbow so i wanted to tell you something else it's a bit surprising you'll be like oh my gosh i never knew that some some of you of course i believe but each and every galaxy but as far as we know has a black hole in the middle and the black holes are generally the remains of dead stars who have the mass more than 30 times that of our sun now that means our sun is pretty small and the bigger bigger suns than our solar masses so the black hole in the middle of our galaxy is like 13 suns put in a row together that's how wide it is now imagine that like we're just tiny imagine how many earths it would need like lined up in a row which is a bit of a mystery but in the andromeda the things have gone like a bit more crazy you need so many suns it's it's so many suns i don't even remember jeez it's uh what a crazy number it's like 1000 suns lined up together in a row can you imagine like you'd be seeing over the horizon and all you can see is just light and like a huge ball of like, like a huge row of fireballs and there's nuclear nuclear reactions and nuclear fusion and all that stuff everything you can do all that 1000 suns it's pretty amazing and then like other galaxies as well and if i tell you how many suns they would mean you'd be like oh my gosh we are smaller than heaven like smaller than we can probably imagine because like the galaxy is far away like 49 million light years 51 million light years and the chandra observatory like the satellite chandra satellite has been studying all of these faraway galaxies and taking snapshots of them and then looking deep in the core like deep in the center of the galaxy and the Hubble Space Telescope which is really good is doing the same thing as well twisting itself around pointing itself in different directions and then seeing different types of galaxies and sometimes it's a bit weird but um, galaxies sometimes have like the black holes but then the weird bit is they've got like a plasma just shooting out of them um, yeah well but that's not exactly what I'm trying to say it is not a quasar 
because the quasars have blazers, not blazers, blazers, which are shooting out of them, and they travel so fast, they like, they're at the speed of flight, 99.99% of the speed of flight. Like, going up in both directions. So, what is a quasar generally? A quasar is like a hyperactive galaxy, but the main questions that scientists have is how is the quasar kept active means like it's a hyperactive which is a yeah not a problem but how does it get all of the gas so it can keep itself running that is still a mystery but then the blazers they're pretty bad they're like plasma jets like gamma rays so far you can't even see where they're going and then you've got this huge gas ring around the black hole. So it means like a quasar is just a more dangerous type of black hole generally. So that's it. The black hole's got gotten too much gas and then it's become a quasar and it's shooting blazers in both directions like the gamma rays and different types of rays, gamma rays, X rays. You know. And then, like, the quasar, we've not seen one of them, the end of the quasar yet, because generally what we're thinking is they're just keeping going on by all of the gas and galaxies around them. But then we found something strange as well, uh, which is really necessary. Uh, the gas around the quasar is generally the building blocks of solar masses, suns, in an easier way. So suns are formed, but then sometimes uh, they're sucked in, in, like, and mainly in the centre of our galaxies, galaxy, sorry, when the scientists saw that they were, instead of having, like, enormous stars around them, which is, like, impossible, the black hole will swallow them, but instead they were finding young stars like younger than our own sun it's a bit weird but that is what happens like all the gas surrounding the black hole it is the building blocks the building blocks of solar masses suns and then this helps to produce young stars but they do get sucked in some of them do at least so some of the other lucky ones somehow they manage to get out of the gravitational pull of the black hole but now you must be asking how did the scientists find out about the black hole i'll tell you something so a scientist called annette Kers was studying and trying to find if there is a black hole in the centre of our galaxy. And there are two different teams also doing the same thing. And the both of the teams, like, there was a European team and there was another team, which I don't remember. They had nice advanced material. But I guess she did not have any material. But what she had instead was photos so there's a particular star everyone was following at the first it was called so one it was going around in the center of gravity our black hole but then the anna guess's attention was drawn by another star called so2 and if you listen to this you'll be pretty weirded so the so2 if this is the black hole what it is being doing it like if, if it starts off here it's going so rapidly like whenever it reaches this point near the black hole it's literally flung out and then back on its orbit so like it goes like in an oval shape and when it goes to the nearer point of the black hole it's gone so rapidly it's flung away literally and it, it's pretty hard to imagine but it goes at speeds of 5,000 kilometers per second, which is a lot. And that's about 
28% of the speed of light, which is still very much. <laughs> we can't even reach that speed. So, bye guys. Thank you for watching my video. Bye.